I'm going to program the next two weeks for our affiliate right now. And I want to show you guys how I do it and why I do the things that I do. So I already have written out kind of like our strength structure of the things we're going through. So the next few months and uh, well, next few weeks, this month of April that we're heading into, we're going to do a little bit of deadlifting. We're going to go through the nine foundational movements of CrossFit. And in that we're touching on the strict press, the push press and the push jerk and more of a strength routine and less in the, uh, the Metcons. This will be in the Metcons, but a little bit different. So I have that written out on the side. I'm just going to fill that in real quick for these two weeks. And then I'll start hopping into what Metcons and things like that we're going to be working on. But on Monday, this next week, we're going to strict press. We're going to go five by three. It's going to be an every two minute. I keep things on the every two minute just because that way no one in class is moving and working at the same time. And that way no one is ahead of each other. We all finish at the same time. We all start at the same time. It keeps the structure a lot more oriented for me as a coach. And uh, I just think it works out better overall. On Friday, we're going to do power clean waves. If you've ever done a wave, you should do a wave. Lighter, heavier, start again at the heavier, lighter, heavier, starting at the heavier, a little bit heavier again. Uh, you can do it sets of three or sets of two. We're going to do sets of two since we've never done it before. And then on Tuesday, we're going to have our shoulder care. Shoulder care is basically part of a, an active warm-up that we use to just do a little bit of prehab, rehab on our shoulders. We have a lot of older members, so we're trying to make sure uh, we stay safe, we stay healthy. We do that once a week on varying days. That way, people who don't come on the same day or people who come on different days can still get the benefit of doing that at least once a week. All right. And then we have our 5 by 3 strict press over here. And on week two, we're going to do a push press. Also, five by three on every two minute. Our waves, I gotta think about that one, but I think it's also gonna be on every two minute, and our deadlift will be on every two minute. Unless I feel generous making it every three. But this is essentially the outline we're gonna follow. So then when I come up with Metcons, I have to work around that. Now, during the weeks leading up to this, I program it every two weeks at a time, I keep this little notebook. And I write down things that we haven't done, things that members mention, oh, we haven't done this in a while, or we should try this. I write it down, and I write down things that I do. That way I can put it all together. We come up with something interesting that pieces together things we haven't done in a while, things we need to do, and things that I personally want to do or want the members to try doing. So I'm just going to start throwing up movements on the board, and we're going to go from there. All right. Now, I know we need to squat this week, and I want to do a back squat and an EMOM. So I'm going to toss that in there. I don't know what the other three movements are going to be. I don't know how long the going to be for, but I know that's going to be the main part of it. So I'm going to cross that off the list. I also talked a little bit before about how we're doing the nine foundational movements. In here, we're also going to do a sumo deadlift high pull workout and a med ball clean workout. So I have to figure out where we're going to fit all of that. I think I'm going to do sumo deadlift high pulls uh, Saturday. Saturdays are typically partner workouts. This one I'll do a team workout since that one is partner. Now we also have Murph coming up, so I have to keep that in mind because people obviously want to do well, but we're not going to change our entire training program just to be about Murph, right? So I have to fit in different things here and there to work with that. I like pairing similar movement patterns, so like if we deadlift in the strength, I like hitting some sort of posterior thing in the Metcon because it's already warmed up. You don't have to warm it up again. So I'll probably do something like that there. In regards to this, I'll probably do push-ups on this day. TGU is Turkish get-up. My members hate them, but it's one of the best movements you can do. So I'm gonna work on this EMOM, try and start piecing together the week around this a little bit. Thursdays are typically active recovery, so Go pretty hard on Wednesdays and not have to really worry about that. This EMOM, I think I'm gonna go 24 minutes. That way you can still fit it pretty well into a class. We have the back squat, we have the box jump. Two more execution or strength based movements. Before those, I like to mix in some sort of non structural cardio element. That way you reach these under a little bit of fatigue. That's the whole idea. So I think we're gonna do a row 14 or 12 cal. Then we might row twice. Yeah, we're gonna row twice. 
that's a good workout. So I use the rower twice in one workout. Meaning, probably not going to use it at all the rest of the week unless it's on a Saturday for like a larger workout. So this one is done, and it is weightlifting, gymnastics, monostructural. I like to just keep track of that at the bottom of each box, that way I can kind of think about it as a whole picture by the end of it. This is a workout that I did this past week. I always test the workouts before I give them to the members, that way I know what they should expect. I know if I should change it at all. And that way they know exactly, they know that I'm reliable as a coach and a programmer, that they can trust me with their fitness because I do the same exact things that they're doing. So it's going to get them somewhere. So this workout I did, uh, might have been yesterday actually, and it is three sets of two rounds each. You're going to rest one minute between the sets. Then I did four shuttle run. I did handstand walk. We're going to do wall walks for the class. Six wall walks. And it was 15 GHD sit-ups. More of a sprint. Each one took you took me, it was under four minutes. I think it was like three and a half-ish, a little under three and a half. That's a solid workout again. So that's going to be monostructural and gymnastics. On Monday, the day before that, we're going to do a push-up and run interval. So I think we're going to do, yeah, we'll go 400 meter. No, we'll go 300 meter run. And then max push-ups. Someone's getting arrested. But to make this more Murph prep, I want to kind of make a buy-in. And I'm going to make it... No, I don't want to. What we're going to do is a 300 run, max push-ups, and we're going to go on every... every two minute and then scale for slower runners that way they can still get a few push-ups in and we're gonna do that um, five sets ten minutes long not bad mostly running but you'll get a solid pump I'm also trying to get everybody better at running because not everybody's very good at it and it's one of the best ways to improve your aerobic capacity so it's really running intervals just in disguise they don't know that though all right that's good so that's another monostructural and gymnastics Let's move on to Friday. Friday's our last like bigger day for the week. It's not a partner and it's not recovery. So let's look at what else I want to get done in here. Now we have no barbells in the neck comms yet. And the only time we've touched a barbell is in our strict press. So and do something on the bar since we already have them out. Then we're gonna do a shoulder to overhead. Now we did a shoulder to overhead GHD workout um, a few weeks back and I didn't want to make it similar. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. I want to do shoulder to overhead. And what haven't we done this week? So now it's kind of take a broader look at the week. Um, main things we haven't really touched on. We haven't done a burpee at all. We haven't done, we haven't used the bike. Um, we run outside, we run twice. Shot runs and outside. We rode, we rode. Um, we have a lot left that we can do. But I think I want to do shoulder to overhead. Sumo deadlift high pull. I think we're going to do a salt bike. So shoulder overhead. We haven't done anything on a pull-up bar, so we're going to do toes to bar here. I think I might just make it a couplet. Everything so far this week has had rest in it, so I don't want this one to have rest. So what I think we're going to do Is we're going to make it a little bit more sprinty and i think we haven't we haven't done something like this in a while so i kind of want to do a 21 15 9 shoulder overhead and toast the bar should be under five minute workout um shoulder overhead probably gonna go 135 95 toast the bar it's just toast the bar so now we have gymnastics and weightlifting let's go to our partner workout on saturday I often fall into the trap of doing just different buy-ins and then they work on the same thing together with partner workouts. So I'm trying to stray away from that and get a little more creative, but it's not easy. Partner workouts are tough. So what I'm trying to think about is, hmm. 
There's a lot of this when it comes to programming, a lot of standing around and thinking. So bear with me. All right, it is still interesting. Calm down. Assume another time pull. A lot of opening the hip. Salt bike. We just closed the hip, the toes to bar. I already did GHDs this week, so I'm not gonna do like a V up or sit up or anything like that. We just went overhead. We went overhead a lot this week actually. So I kinda wanna keep it a couplet. What's gonna happen is you and your partner have to get through five rounds of 35 or 28 cal salt bike and 35 sumo deadlift high pull 95 65. And every minute, either one of you is working or the other one is resting. So it's not, you don't do five rounds of one on one off, you do five rounds of this with one minute on one minute off. So if someone's always working, this might not always be you. Sweet. So now let's do Thursday's workout. More recovery. Turkish get-ups is already in here. We biked. We rode. The only element we haven't used that we have is a skier. So we're going to do that. We've done this combination before. It's kind of a classic Thursday for us. Um, <clears throat> and we've do no, been doing a lot of L-sits. Um, I don't want to mix that in again. We just did an A-bomb here, so we're not going to do it there. I think I'm going to do is... I haven't done any AMRAPs this week. So we're going to AMRAP. We'll go 20 minutes. So we go a little bit different than the day before. And very different from that day. We'll go 20 minute AMRAP of ski. Five hundred. Six. Turkish get ups, 53, 35. I'm gonna do a ring support hold, ring support hold, 30 seconds. So a little bit of a shoulder burner, but also it's gonna get the blood flowing just the way we need it to. I might change that if I do it again, but always these are up to interpretation until the day before that they do them. Like, so I need to test this one before Monday. I already did that one. This one I'll need to test. Thursdays I don't typically test and Saturdays I can't test because I don't have a partner to do them with, but sometimes I'll do things similar to them. Get a feel for it, make sure it's actually going to be appropriate for the time domain. Saturday would typically go a little bit longer, Thursday should go a little bit longer, but something I really been wanting to do is a workout that's over 40 minutes long because we haven't really done those. And like I said before, Murph is coming up and that workout is very long for most people. So that's what we're going to hit in week 15. All right. So here we go. We do a workout that I want to do that I need to put in before I don't do it. So it is rowing and cleans and then rowing and med ball cleans. So like I said, we need to mix in the med ball cleans somewhere in here. We just did a double rowing workout right here. So I don't want to put it too close together. So I think I'm going to put it on Friday. And I haven't come up with the workout. I just know I want it to be something like this. Let's say row. Let's say 16 cal. Something that takes roughly a minute for most for most guys. It'll be 16, um, 16, 14 or 16, 13, probably 13. And then we're gonna do five, touch and go, power clean. And then you're gonna row another little bit, but this time it's gonna be a little bit less. It's gonna be 12 or nine. And then you do a med ball clean. but you're gonna do 10 of them and you get rest for 90 seconds. We did a similar workout to this with double unders, single unders, and kettlebell thrusters and wall balls. So I like to do this matching movement patterns, but at a less intensity. So you have to be able to breathe a little bit more. You can't, like, you can just stop and take a break on bed ball planes, but you shouldn't. You should just force yourself to do them even though you're tired. It's harder to do that with a touch and go power clean, which is why it's the first movement. Right? And that's why it's forced to be touch and go. That way you have to choose a weight light enough, but our X will still be 135 and 95. All right, that one's done. 
So let's pick a day for a 40-minute workout. Wednesday, it's going to be our 40-minute workout day. And now I either need to decide if it's going to be 40-minute AMRAP, 40-minute uh, EMOM, or if I just want to make something long that I think is going to take that much time. I think it's a safer bet for me if I do an AMRAP. That way I know it's going to take that long. An EMOM is going to be too repetitive if I do that. Um, doing everything 10 times would be a lot. An AMRAP is still um, arguably too repetitive. So I'm just going to throw up some movements and then uh, try and figure this out. If you can help me. We're going to do a sled drag, a uh, sled pull. Sorry. Mm, no, we're not because I'm going to put that on Monday. I did a workout with my wife. It was a good workout. Um, it's two minute AMRAP, one minute rest. And then we did it six times. We did it back and forth, but it's going to be too complex for class, so we're just going to do um, it's 20 cal assault for me, but that needs to be toned down. So it's going to be, um, it's like an 18, 13. Cal, salt bike, max, sled pull, three plate, two plate. Perfect. All right, this week, the second week's always easier for some reason, it just is. Um, so, I want to do a reverse sled drag here. The, top, the hard part about that is that we don't have that many of them which would mean this has to be an EMOM or a different type of AMRAP or something like that. Um, so I'm still thinking about that. We're gonna row here. No, we're not, because we row there. Cleans, shoulder overhead there. So we did a pod pull, we did power cleans. Should do a snatch. Let's do power snatch. We're gonna do. Hmm. We're gonna do strict toast to bar. I like mixing in strict work, uh, especially with things that they haven't done um, before. So we do a pretty decent amount of strict pull-ups, like we're doing them this week, we're doing them tomorrow, but uh, we, I don't think we've ever done strict toes to bar. So that'll be interesting to see um, if they can do it and if we can teach them to do it. We've been doing a lot of, we've been doing a lot of V-ups, a lot of GHD setups, and a lot of L-sets, which I'm really enjoying having them do the L-sets. It's been really good for them. I like that. This is when I start to get a little bit all over the place. Let's see. Two minute in there. Doing intervals there. Did an AMRAP there, so I think I'm gonna make this one an EMOM. 24 EMOM. Farm will carry 100 feet. Eight strict toes to bar. And then I need one more. At least one more. No, I need two more because 24 is not good. Yeah, it is. I'm just stupid. Eight times three is 24. Yeah. It's not going to work. Not gonna work. We're going to do a chin up hold. We've done these before. We're going to do them again. 30 second chin up hold. So this one really is active recovery. It's a lot of uh, moving, uh, just kind of being fluid. Like your heart is not going to get up a ton. And that's okay because. They're going to go 40 minutes on this day. And half the gym is in a volleyball league, and they're not here on Thursdays anyway. So, it's whatever. On Friday. No, Saturday. I want to do rope climbs. Because we do have quarterfinals coming up. We have a few members who made it. So, they need to be well-versed in that, because it's probably going to come up. But we still have Tuesday, and that has nothing on it at all. So, we've been doing a lot of squatting. The past few weeks, I don't think we did much. We did back squats there. So I think we're going to do wall balls right here. I need to think about what else.
else we should do. Well, there's also Burpee Broad Jumps. Alright, this is gonna be brutal, but it's gonna be really good. I'm gonna go. I think we're gonna do a 15 minute AMRAP. 10 wall balls, one blank burpee broad jump. Each round, you add one. So the second round will be 20 wall balls, two lengths. Each length is roughly 25 feet. That's great, that's a good workout. Um, I forgot to put box jumps, no, I put box jumps in there. Okay, never mind. I did forget. This is turning out great. Sorry it's all black and blue. Should have brought all the different colors so you guys are more entertained. Let's see. So that is, uh, could all, could arguably be all monostructural, could arguably be no monostructural, but um, I'm gonna put monostructural gymnastics and weightlifting. Is this, this one's done too, unless I think of something else that I wanna do. Um, I think we're gonna wall walk here. Mm. No, we're gonna walk over here. Um, like chest bar pull ups, bar muscle ups in a while. One, we don't, I don't really program bar muscle ups because not a lot of gym can do them. Doesn't mean you shouldn't program them, we do. We do. Um, but you don't want to discourage people too often. Um, like once I put in a handstand pirouette, knowing that maybe two people in the gym could get them. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, so people aren't completely and always satisfied with their fitness. So they know there's something out there that I should still be striving for. Even if they are really fit, there's still always something to strive for. The other reason is to give the people the opportunity who can do them to do them and to be proud of the fact that they can do them. So that's why I don't put in a lot, but I put in every now and then. Same thing with rope climbs, although rope climbs, if you learn how to squeeze the leg with your rope, uh, squeeze, squeeze the rope with your feet, pretty much anybody can do them, which is why I put them a little bit more often. The problem with putting them on a Saturday is that uh, it took a lot of people on Saturdays and we left two ropes. So that's why these have to be teams of four. That's what makes it a little bit more tricky to program. So we're going to come back to that. I want to touch on this 40 minute workout again. Ideally, it's over 40 minutes. We're going to run 400, reverse sled drag, we're going to go 100 meters, and then we're going to power snatch 10 reps, and we're going to do that eight times. So that's two minutes. six times and I think people will slow down enough. I think it'll be roughly around 40 minutes. We're gonna put a 45 minute cap, but I want it to definitely be over 30 minutes, definitely longer. Um, and these two can be flip-flopped. That way we can deal with having enough sleds at the same time. And the power snatch will make a significant weight. Um, let's make it one, I don't want to do 155, 105, but I might change that if I do it because that's 60 reps now. Not gonna, let's do let's do the classic 135, 95. All right, so that is monostructural weightlifting. All right, that leads us to our team of four workout. All right, team of four. When it comes to team workouts like this, I typically want everybody to have a different length buy-in, and then everybody comes together to work on something. But it's tough to figure out what can everybody work on. Um, that's like uh, progressive. So you could do a sled pull. We don't have sleds that we could push. Um, 
but we're already doing sled pulls here and we're doing a sled pull there. So I don't really want to do a sled pull here. So what's another thing that's like that? We've done bar face to burpees before that everybody works on together. What I think what we're going to do is heavy squats in some capacity. Now the buy-ins have to be significant enough, but different enough that everybody gets to the thing they're working on at a different time. But I have to think of two more things. So we have rope climb. We're gonna make that mm, six. Wall walks, we're gonna make four. And then we'll do Fifteen, twelve, cal, ski. We're not going to row because we just rode the day before that. We haven't done shuttle runs this week. We did run a lot. What do you think? Shuttle runs? No shuttle runs? We'll do shuttle runs. How many shuttle runs? Long ways or short ways? I feel like we just did shuttle runs. No, we did this week. No. That's perfect not garage jumps. We didn't do shuttle runs. It's hard part about doing two weeks at a time is that there's so many things going on. You have to keep them all different, but um what's the word? Effective. That's the word. Alright. Shuttle runs. 50 foot shuttle runs. So six takes about a minute. So twelve. Take around like two minutes. Six rope climbs for most people in the gym. Uh, that'll be a significant amount of time. That'll be three to six strict pull ups, so 18 strict pull ups. I might also put out the sleds. I might do that instead. Even though we did it earlier in the week. Uh, I'll pass it. I'll get back to you. Now, when it all these buy-ins will take roughly a different amount of time. The wall walks should be done first. The ski should be right behind it. And then the rope climb and the shuttle run will be somewhere after that. And then together, they'll work on 20 back squats at 185, 125, and 30. Mm, no. 40. We'll do 25. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll do 40 again. 40. At a lighter weight, of course. So probably 115. 75. Team of four. Four rounds. So you only do the buy in of each thing once, which is whatever. I mean, you're only doing four wall walks and curl climbs. Um, the dose has to be significant enough that it does something to you in the workout. It might not do something for you later, uh, like the day after, but the squats will definitely affect you for sure. But you're splitting it between the four people. So that that is a lot. So that's definitely going to be a lot of structural gymnastics. Wait, that's me. So once you finish it all, you can kind of take a look back. Um, just give it a little overview. Make sure it looks all right. And then as I'm putting it into sugar wad, I'll take a deeper look, a closer look to make sure it actually all looks okay. And then as I start testing them, um, I can fine tune them a little bit. So like that one I know doesn't need fine tuning because it's just short and it's to the point. The shoulder overhead, most people have to break them up early and then probably towards the end. And a lot of people have to with the toes to bar. So I think for the gym, it's probably gonna be like an eight, six to eight minute workout for most people. When it comes to the Saturday workouts, I can't test this one, right? It's a team of four. I've done a workout similar to it, but I can't test it. Um, I'm just gonna see how it goes on the day of. When it comes to the EMOMs, I kind of know how they feel. I know at what point our members start getting too broken down from the amount of calories. Um, doing a lot of back squats under fatigue these two weeks, so we'll see how they hold up. The reason we're doing that is because during the open, 24.3 absolutely wrecked everybody's legs. They can't do squats under fatigue, and I consider that my fault. So we're going to try and fix it. This one I already tested. This one is very simple, but I should still test it. Um, tested that one. 
That one on Festa looks like fun. But yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. I do it every two weeks, so I won't program next week. I'll program the week after that, see how all this goes, or is beginning to go. And I'll do it all over again. If you have any questions, uh, ask them. And I'll do my best to help you uh, figure it out. But it's just a creative process. It's a good time. It's fun. And then um, you get to see it play out. It's like watching a painting come to life for an hour every day in class. And uh, it's cool to see feedback, to see people progress and get better at things and learn different movements that we haven't done. Um, so try it out. Program for yourself. Program for others. And uh, you'll just get better at it over time. It's a, a very fun way of doing art that we get the privilege of doing here. So, all right. That's it.